of Srimanti Radharani because he wants to experience that love which Radha has for Krishna. And it happened that when he was in Vinay Natsala, he actually saw Krishna and Krishna came to him. So he was always anxious, when will Krishna come again? So in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came back to Mayapur. But he was always thinking of Krishna and so it was arranged that he would leave home, he would take some dance and he left his young wife and went, he wanted to go to Vrindavan because he wanted to find Krishna and he thought Krishna must be in Vrindavan. So he took sannyas and he was going to go to Vrindavan. But Lord Nityananda tricked him and brought him instead to Shantipur. And when he was in Shantipur, they brought Mother Sachi, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's own mother, came there to see her son. And Mother Sachi, she was very broken-hearted to see her son as a sannyasi because as a young man, he was very tall and handsome and he had beautiful long black hair. But now he had taken sanya and he had shaved his head and then put on the clothes of the sanyasi. The, the, the very uh, brown colored clothing of the sanyasi, the renounced order of life. So she was shocked and she was broken hearted to see her son in this way. But anyway, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told his mother, she said, he told his mother, she said, you know, if you want, I'll give it up and I'll come back with you. He, he said, I was, I did this in a, a, in a spur of a moment. I was foolish. I shouldn't have done it. So I'll give it up and come home with you. But mother said, she said, no, 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 don't do that. If you do that, that would be terrible because people will all criticize you that you'd renounce the world and now you'll come back again. So that is considered very bad in the day of culture. So Mother Shanti didn't want her son to do that. But she said, please don't go to Vrindavan because if you go to Vrindavan, it will be very difficult for me to get news of you because Vrindavan is so far away from Mayapur, number three. So it will be very rare that I ever get any news about you. So please don't go so far away because as a sannyasi, he cannot go home. So he has to go. Where will he go? So Mother Sachi requested him, Please, can you go to Jagannath Puri? Because if you go to Jagannath Puri, Jagannath Puri and Navadri are like two rooms in the same house. Two rooms in the same house. Just all the time people are coming and going, you know? You live in the same house. You know, you share a house with people. Somebody's in one room and you're in the other room. You meet them all the time, you know, coming and going. Sometimes you go to the kitchen, sometimes you go to the washroom. So you always meet the people in the same house. So Mother said, she said, if you go to Jagannath Puri, then I will get news of you regularly. And that will be very, then I will be able to survive. But if you go to Vrindavan, I will very, it will be very difficult for me to get any news. And if I don't get any news of you, I will die. I won't want to maintain my life. Because Mother said she, she had two sons. The first son, he'd already gone and taken Sanyas. He left home first and took Sanyas. And so she got the second son, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, she got him married. And first, the first wife died, and so she got married again. So the second wife. But 
We go to the temple. There's no giant out there. Where are they? Oh, they're sick. They're in their room. They're private. We cannot see them. So Lord Jagannath is away. So at that time, what will Chaitanya Mahaprabhu do? Because he comes to live in Jagannath Puri. And he wants to see Lord Jagannath. He will go every day to see Krishna there. But when you're sick, you cannot see them. So what will he do? So he, he goes away from Jagannath Puri. And he goes to a place which is called Awana and it's about 30 kilometers away from Jagannath Puri and there's a, a famous deity there of Awana. Awana is a form of Lord Vishnu. It's a four-armed form. Now why would Chaitanya Mahaprabhu go there? It's a form of Vishnu. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a devotee of Krishna. He just doesn't care about Krishna. He just wants to be Krishna. So, it's explained that deity at Alana, that is actually a special form of God Vishnu, which is worshipped with Krishna mantra. Now usually a Vishnu deity will be worshipped with Vishnu mantra. But the deity at Alana is worshipped with Krishna mantra. Why? Because this form of Vishnu, this is actually the form of Krishna. There's a pastime. There's a famous, there's a pastime that Krishna was dancing Rasa Lila with the Gopi. And they were dancing the Rasa Lila, but Krishna saw the Gopi, each Gopi thinks, ah, oh, Krishna is dancing with me. Krishna loves me more than the other Gopi. Krishna is with me. Krishna is my sweetheart. And they were thinking, Krishna, and Krishna couldn't understand their mind. So Krishna disappeared from all the gopi. And so that when Krishna disappeared, then the gopis became mad. Oh, where is Krishna gone? And they began to look. They all went to search for Krishna. Where is he? Where did he go? And they went everywhere. And they were asking the trees, did you see Krishna? Did he go this way? They would ask the animals, the deer, and the parrot. Did you see Krishna? Which way did he go? Did you see him? And then actually what happened was, they came and they found, that they found that actually it was Krishna, but Krishna knew the gopis were coming looking for them. So Krishna disguised himself. He took on the form of Vishnu. Although Krishna is a two-armed form, he, he assumed four arms. And he, he took on the form of Lord Vishnu. So he was standing there in his four-armed form, you know, holding the symbols of Vishnu, the club, and the conch, and the chakra, and the lotus, the four symbols of Vishnu. And the gopis came, and they saw Lord Vishnu. Oh, Lord Vishnu! And they offered their obeisances. They offered their bow down to Lord Vishnu, Ganda Bhaktana. He said to Lord Vishnu, and then he said, Lord Vishnu, did you see Krishna in the room? And Lord Vishnu looked at him and said, Oh, Krishna, oh yeah, you've been done, buddy.
called Lord Jagannath the sick because Lord Jagannath needs to rest. So for two weeks he's resting, and then after two weeks, then he Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will come back again to Jagannath Puri because we're going to have Bhakti Ashram festival, right? After after Lord after Lord Jagannath gets to sick, then Lord Jagannath recovers and he says, I want to go home. I want to go and visit my family. Lord Jagannath has been living in Dwarka. He's been living in Dwarka. But his family is in Vrindavan. And in Vrindavan, his mother Yashoda, Nanda Baba, and the gopis, and the gopas, always Krishna's old friends and family. So Krishna, after he's been sick, he told his wife, the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, he told her, I want to go home and see my family. But he, he, he didn't tell us exactly who he was going to see. If he told her who he was going to see, she would never let him go. But anyway, he said, I, I just want to go and rest for a while. Let me go and uh, I'll come back after a few days. So this is the Shrakti Atra, but Krishna is going to go to Vrindavan. He's leaving Dwarka, which, which is uh, Nila Chawa, and he's going to Sundar Chawa, which is Gundicha, the Gundicha temple, which is two, three kilometers down the road from the Kekana Puri temple. So every year they pull the chariots there from Nila Chawa, from the big temple, the Kekana Puri, they will pull it down the road, along the road, to Gundija, which is Sundara Chow, which is actually Vrindavan. But before the Rathyatra, the day before the Rathyatra, they have a very important festival. They have the festival Gundija Marjana. Gundija. Kundicha is the temple Vrindam and Marjana renamed the temple. So all of our temples we celebrate this Kundicha Marjana. Clean the temple very thoroughly. So before Lord Chaitanya's time, usually it would be the king would send his men to clean the Gundicha. Because Gundicha, Lord Jagannath only comes there once a year. He will only come once a year. That time he will stay for seven, eight days and then go back. So they have to clean the temple because for, for one year nobody's been there. So it gets very dark, dusty and dirty. You know, Jagannath Puri is by the sea. So there's a lot of wind, a lot of dust, a lot of sun. So they have to clean everything. Over a period of one year, you can imagine how what place gets like. Maybe like when we had the, 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 the COVID, when we had that horrible COVID disease, for some time you couldn't go out. So you know you're in your other house or your other place or your office or nobody went there for some time. It's very dusty, it's very dusty. So Gundija, we will have a cleaning of that place before, the day before Rasyatra. Now it used to be the king would send all his workers, all, all of the soldiers there to clean it. But the soldiers, you know, they're, you know, they don't clean very well. They're just doing it for their job. If it's your job, you know, you don't bother very much. You do it because you don't work very hard. But if you do it as a devotee, then you will do it really nice. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu knew that these people who were cleaning the temple, they're not 
doing it very well. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he called Kasi Mishra. Kasi Mishra is the priest who is in charge. And he's also a minister to the king. The king of Puri is Maharaj Pratiparudra in the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So the king of Puri who's coming in the line of Indra Jumna Maharaj. Indra Jumna Maharaj was the king who brought Lord Jagannath to this world and began the worship of Jagannath. And so Maharaj Pratiparudra is coming in that line from Indra Jumna Maharaj. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he wanted to clean the temple and he told Kasi Mishra, I want you to tell the king that we will go and clean and I will go with all the devotees. And Mahaprabhu had thousands of devotees, hundreds of thousands of devotees. They all come for the Jagannath Ratihatra. If you go for Ratiyatra, you will see hundreds of thousands of people come every year for Ratiyatra. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he got everyone, all of these devotees, to go with him to clean the Gundicha temple. And he told him, he told Kati Mishra to tell the king that we need from the coconut leaf and we need also clay pots to bring the water. So he's going to clean it up now water. So they got thousands of brooms and that many, that many big pots, clay pots. And all the devotees were carrying pots and brooms and they all went to the Guru Vicha temple early in the morning the day before Rati Atra, 7 o'clock in the morning, they all went there and they all had rooms and they began to sweep. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told them, I want to see how much you all collect. I want to see all the dust. Because some of you are just pretending to work. You're not really sweeping. So I want each person, you keep your own Whatever you sweep, you keep it in your cloth and show me how much you bless. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he would also sweep. He was sweeping the temple and he collected more dirt than, than all the other devotees put together. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself. He's the Supreme Lord. So he was collecting all the dust. Actually, this cleaning of the Gundicha temple it is very significant because Gundicha means the heart. So cleaning the temple means cleaning Gundicha means to clean the heart. And what is in the heart? What is it that we want to clean out from the heart? All the anartha, all the dirty things. The calm, the growth, the low, the moha, madha, matsadhyā, lust, anger, greed, illusion, madness, envy, fault-finding, um, politics, arguing, quarreling, all of these things, bad things, which are there in the heart. So we have to get them all out. And when you clean the heart, we want to make the heart nice and clean because we're going to invite Krishna to sit in the heart. You want Krishna, Lord Jagannath is going to come to the Gurdhicha temple. The temple has to be very clean. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu organized every year the cleaning of the temple. And they didn't just clean one time. They did not just clean two times, they cleaned three times. They were cleaning three times. The first time they would clean, then they would get the, the bigger things, the stone, and the weed, the big things. The second time it would be finer, and the third time it would be little grains of dust and so on. But they were so particular. 
healer, so careful. And they were cleaning and cleaning, and at the same time they were all chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And then there's a big lake near to the Gundisha temple, and they were drinking the water, and it's really hot. Sometimes they bump into each other and the pot would break. They have to get more pot. They were every, and everywhere, everyone was chanting the holy name. All you could hear was the holy name. Hare Krishna! Hare Krishna! Krishna Krishna! Hare Hare! Hare Rama! Hare Rama! All thousands of devotees, all cleaning and throwing the water and cleaning. They would clean the ceiling, they would clean the walls, they didn't just clean the floor. And after they got all the dust out, they thought there was still some black spot. There were some these black spots which water was not, the trash, the broom was not enough, water was not enough. What did they have to do? They had to, they had to get some alcohol or some turpentine or kerosene or something to, to clean it to get it off. And this way, they had to really endeavor. What was that? These these stains which are there, which are really difficult. Well, first of all, the grains and the stones and the sand. That is all the attachment which we have to our money and to our family and all these things, the, the gross things, you know, we're attached to our land and our property and our beauty and whatever we have. But then the subtle things are there, these stains which are more difficult to get out, that is the subtle things which are there in the heart. And that represents love, puja, and pratishta, prophet, adoration, and distinction. Yeah, we like these things, love, puja, pratishta. So these things, they are more difficult to remove. You have to rub harder to remove these black stains from the ground. And if we want to get rid of these things from our heart, we have to work harder. We have to chant louder. We have to do more service. And we have to develop the real humility of the devotee. What should be the mood of the devotee? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tells us, Shranada Peace Mechena. One should be more tolerant than the tree, devoid of all sense of false prestige, ready to offer all respect to others and not expect any respect for himself. In such a state of mind, one can chant the holy name of the Lord constantly. So that humble mood, to be tolerant, like the tree, just like the trees tolerate the heat and the cold, and you can come, you cut the branches, you take off, take away all the fruit from the tree. The tree never minds, it never complains. It just tolerates. So we have to also develop that mood, that humble mood, that tolerance, that eagerness to offer all respect to others and not expect any respect for ourselves. In that way, the heart will become clean. And when the heart is clean, then we can chant the holy name. And then Krishna will be happy to come and sit in our heart and to bless us. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was personally showing the devotees the importance of cleaning the Gundicha temple. 
He personally showed by his example. It's not enough to tell people to do things. You have to show the example. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught by his example how to renounce the world, how to detach yourself from material sense gratification, and how to render service to Krishna constantly. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personifies this example of humility and he would lead all the devotees cleaning the Kundicha temple every year. He would take off this Lutaria, this mountain of God, which the Sanyasis wear, the Lutaria, and he would use it to rub and clean and to wash the floor. He was using his own cloth to clean everything. And he was so happy when he saw someone had collected a lot of dust, he would praise them and he would encourage others. And he would joke and teach somebody who didn't collect anything and hadn't been doing anything. He would come and joke with them and say, Oh, you've done so much, you've collected so much dust. And everyone would laugh because he knew he hadn't collected any dust. In this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was showing his humor and joking with everyone. And during this pastime of the cleaning of the Gundicha temple, different events took place. There was one devotee, he came with a bucket of water and he poured the water over Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lotus feet. And then he took the water in his hands and drank it. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was not pleased with this devotee. At least externally he was not pleased. Internally he, he, he could understand. But externally he thought this is not proper. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took him by the neck and brought him to Swarup Damodar, who was the, the second head of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said to Swarup Damodar, your Bengali Vaishnava has behaved in the wrong manner. He has, he's caused me to be an offender in the temple of, Lord, of the Lord. You should do something about him. So Swarup Damodar took that Bengali and he took him out. He, he rejected, took him out, rejected him from the temple. He said, you're going to behave like this, you cannot be here. You have to learn how to behave properly. The devotees have to behave properly. Don't go touching people's feet. And don't go throwing things on water on their feet and drinking the water. That is not the way to get the mercy of Krishna. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, thought that was one pastime to play. Another thing which happened during the cleaning of the Gundicha temple was that uh, Shivananda Singh had brought his sons there. So Shivananda Singh's sons were there and were helping to clean the temple. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at one point, he requested the son of Shivananda Singh to chant the holy name and dance. So the son, the young boy, began to dance. But he was dancing and suddenly he fainted. He collapsed and he fell unconscious. All the devotees were worried. Oh, what is wrong? He's collapsed, he's unconscious. Maybe he's going to leave the body. And they were chanting the names of the Lord. Some were calling the Lord Mishrinka Dev. They thought he's going to leave the body. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came there and he put his hand on his chest and said, Go bow, get up and die. Oh, Immediately the boy came back to life and he got up and began to chant in the So this was another pastime which took place during the cleaning of the Gurdicha temple. So cleaning of the Gurdicha temple. We, we will clean the temple. It's very nice to clean the temple. Cleaning the temple, remember, is cleaning our hearts. It's very important. And in our hearts, 
we have a lot of good. The attachments, the grief, the envy, the anger, with all the things which are there in the heart, we have to get them out. In order to develop love for Krishna, we have to clean the heart. So cleaning the heart, of course, thank you, Dan, is also cleaning the heart. We say, Chaito Dharpana Marjanam. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has taught us in the Shikshastikam. Chaito Dharpana Marjanam. Dharpana is the mirror. And Chaito Chaita. Marjanam is cleaning. Chaita is the heart. Chaito Dharpana Marjanam. So clean the heart, the mirror of the heart, by the chanting of the Holy Name. I thank you, Dan. And along with thank you, Dan, we do service also. Not only thank you, Dan, but we have to do service. We have to clean the temple. Temple should be so clean. Just like Lord Krishna was living in Dwarka and he had 16,108 palaces, one for each of his wives. And the wives were cleaning every day. Although there was no dirt, there was nothing, there was no dirt there, but still every day they would be cleaning because they want to make the place so clean for Lord Krishna to be there. Lord Krishna liked to see everything neat and clean. Srila Prabhupada also taught us cleanliness is next to Godliness. So we must keep everything always neat and clean and very important for us. So clean the temple and clean the heart also. We want to clean the heart by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra and by serving Krishna, doing service. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught us. Srila Prabhupada also taught us Sometimes Srila Prabhupada will show us how to clean. We saw one time that these devotees were cleaning the floor. And Prabhupada told us, no, no, not like that. And Prabhupada said, give me the bucket of water. And they got a bucket of water. And Prabhupada put water on the floor. And then Prabhupada got down on his hands and knees, starting to scrub. They like this. Prabhupada was showing by his example. That's yes, very important. We have to show example to others. How to serve Krishna, how to clean the temple, and how to chant Hare Krishna also. That's very important. Okay, are there any questions? Yes, Guru. Pradaparudra, King Pradaparudra and uh, Ramananda Roy, both are materially very elevated, right? But uh, Lord Chaitanya grant audience for Ramananda Roy, but he refused for King Pradaparudra. Right? Is there any re reason for that? <laughs> Is there a reason why Lord Chaitanya restricted Maharaj Pradaparudra from meeting him? But he was very liberal with Ramananda Rai. Well, Ramananda Rai, remember, is not a king. Prataparudra is a king. So the king, a king is a materialist, generally a king is a materialist person. Has a lot of wealth and enjoys a lot of sense gratification. And the Sanyasi, particularly Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's time as a sannyasi in the line of Shankaracharya, they're very strict about who they will associate with. They will not mix with Vishayis. A Vishayi is a materialistic sense enjoyer. 
So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu refused to meet Maharaj Prataparudra because Maharaj Prataparudra was a king. And it's not, it wasn't good at uh, that particular time for a sannyasi, someone like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to associate or to be mixing with a materialistic person like a king. That's why he didn't want to be Maharaj Prataparudra. But Ramananda Rai, on the other hand, he was from Allah-born to the king 
He gave. He didn't agree to meet the king, but he gave some of his outer cloth to the king. And when the king got the cloth, the king worshipped it like it was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. So those are some of the dealings between Maharaj Prataparudra and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, Mahaprabhu was very pleased to see the king take the humble position to speak for Lord Jagannath. And that's why he, you know, gives so much mercy to Prataparudra. When he saw the king actually sweeping for the Lord Jagannath, so then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu thought that yeah, he's, he's a real devotee and I should give him some mercy. And so that's why he got to massage him and he embraced him. But he was disguised, he put on the dress of a, a common Vaishnava, an no ordinary devotee. He didn't come as a king. But Ramananda Rai, he's an eternal associate with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But he was one of the intimate Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had three and a half intimate associates. Swarup Damodar Goswami, Ramananda Rai, Siki Mahiti, and Siki Mahiti's sister. They were his intimate associates. Who he would discuss the confidential pastimes of Radha and Krishna with.